Mission trees are a major part of EU4. In fact, mission trees are a major selling point for a lot of the DLCs that come out nowadays for this old game. The amount of content that these things add is pretty crazy when you think about it, with some of them even adding branching paths that allow for extra replayability with the same nations. But today, we're gonna get rid of all of that, and we're gonna see how EU4 looks with no unique mission trees. Everyone is on an equal playing field in terms of missions with no buffs and no claims to speak of. If this sounds fun to you, make sure you leave a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already because you're missing out on a lot of content if you're not already subscribed. Feeling a little festive today with Christmas right around the corner, so I figure we might as well bust out one of my uh, one of my pretty shirts. Overall, what would you guys say is your favorite mission tree in the game and why? Let us know in the comments below and if you want to uh, have a little conversation about it, a civil conversation, you can check out somebody else's comments and uh, give them a reply. Let's have some healthy, fun conversation about it. And it is also worth noting that there is still going to be all of the regular events, so we're gonna still see the Hundred Years War. There just won't be any missions associated with it. The only thing I touched was missions. If we do wanna see what the world will look like if there wasn't any events, let me know that in the comments below as well. We've already got some interesting changes happening. We've uh, got the Bordeaux as well as most of this area over here in Normandy going to the French, except for the Cotentin or however that is pronounced. And then over here, we've got Hungary eating Bosnia and Serbia, splitting it with Ragusa. And uh, looks like Albania going in for the kill on Serbia. Also down in the south, Venice has actually yoinked Moria from uh, the Byzantines, meaning the Ottomans won't have it. So that is quite a big buff or, or a nerf rather to the Ottomans because there's a decent bit of dev over here. Yeah, France is going buck wild, literally just full annex except for one province, Provence. Um, so uh, France is going to be pretty strong without their mission tree because there's a lot of development in this area. It doesn't really matter if they get permanent claims on like half of the world. I do reckon there's going to be like a slight nerf to a lot of the more stronger nation uh, mission trees, like the ones from Domination, for example. But it's hard to say how it's going to look in the long term. But um, I definitely think there's going to be differences. At least maybe the, the great powers won't be the only ones to do it, you know? Yeah, we're only 10 years in and we've already got a coalition for France. Uh, looks like no missions, no problem. They'll just get some manual claims and take whatever they can and then, you know, make a bunch of people mad and, and probably get a punitive war against them. We'll see how things go with that. Quite a bit of chaos going on over here in uh, the Timmy land. It looks like they attacked Ajam and then they backed up the Mams. Quite a bit of action going on over here. It looks like the Timurids attacked Ajam and then the Mamluks attacked Najd. And for some reason, Timmy backed up Najd and is now in a massive war. And um, <laughs> they're getting beat up on. So I don't think uh, I don't think we're gonna see a strong Timmy like we did last time. Yeah, this is uh, what we call FAFO here in America. France definitely messed around and they definitely are finding out they uh, got a coalition and um, it has attacked them. They also got attacked by England while they were getting coalitioned. So I don't think France is going to be doing well. They uh, expanded a little bit too much, a little too fast, I think. And uh, I'm here for it. I, I'm definitely always happy to see a major get brought down. Man, France is kind of the like just personification of that meme of like the, you know, L plus ratio. It's like excommunicated plus dismantled plus coalition plus return normandy to the british it's really just all around a bad time for them and literally like two years later castile with their uh, personal union of aragon naples and navarra going in picking at the bones of france and um solidifying their downfall yeah and it just it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse the uh, austrians have taken paris and um France is just dissolved into a bunch of different like random provinces and they're still in a war over here with Genoa of all people. Uh, but meanwhile, in the north, the English are growing, uh, taking over Scotland and they've already got plenty of land in Ireland. The Poles got their personal union over the Lithuanians and they are expanding a wee little bit. Uh, meanwhile, Muscovy is expanding a bit and uh, looks like they're going to be taking over the land that they weren't quick enough to take from Novgorod up here. The Mams are consolidating quite a bit of land without a mission tree like the one that they got in King of Kings. Uh, they're definitely gonna be slower, I think, but I would say that they're actually doing better than they normally do in King of Kings. So we'll see how things go with that. Uh, meanwhile, to the north of them, the Ottomans a little slow, actually haven't even finished up the Baliks and we're already like 35, 40 years in. So a little slow for the Ottomans, but uh, you can't ever count them out because they'll, they'll generally just explode soon after the start. And the downfall of Timmy continues. Some weird borders going on over here with uh, Orochoni uh, and Orochoni splitting Zhu or being split by Zhu rather. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that's all about, but uh, I, I do like it. It's, it's the nation so nice that they named it twice. Meanwhile, Oirat has integrated their subject and uh, they're looking pretty strong. Definitely going to be a, uh, a large unguarded nomadic frontier, if I had to guess. And as per usual, Cabo Verde colonized by the Portuguese 
the colonial game has begun. Well, it's 1500. Um, <laughs> safe to say that uh, no mission trees makes things look uh, quite a bit messier, I would say. The AI maybe benefits from having the direction of a mission tree. Uh, and, and in the absence of them, it's very, very messy. Especially over here. Castile has pushed up and absolutely gutted the French lands as well as uh, Gascony. And it looks like they're even looking to uh, take a bit more of the mainland from the English. Uh, Burgundy has blomped out a little bit, but then they got inherited and spit out a bunch of little places for the Emperor. Uh, meanwhile, the Emperor is, um, you know, expanding with a couple of his one province minor subjects from France expanding as well. So, uh, super, super messy. Meanwhile, Venice is expanding up into uh, Lombardy as well as down into central Italy. Uh, they've even taken a province over here. Uh, they've taken some land over here. So they're definitely cutting off the Ottomans. And I think that they will be able to navally beat the Ottomans if they were to go to war. So uh, hard to say what the Ottomans are going to do because the Mamluks have gotten even more powerful. Like they're they're very strong. And I think that they probably could 1v1 the Ottomans right now. Meanwhile, the Poles are crusading against the Steppe Hordes and uh, Muscovy also getting crusaded by the Danes and the Poles. So uh, doesn't look like Orthodox is going to do very well this time around. The downfall of Timmy still continues. And we have a beautiful pink Kabu that has popped out here with uh, Portugal right here. And then Jenei over here doing very good. Um, also, the homies on the map, if you guys don't know, the homies are the people who click the join button below the video. They get early access to the videos on the channel as well as uh, access to exclusive roles and chats in the Discord. So if you're a Giga Chad, become one of the homies, click the join button. Oh, well, on the topic of colonization, Portugal is in Brazil. We have uh, Castile over here, and I think this is a uh, colonial Colombia. And that is really it. Colonial game, a little slow to begin this time around. And then you just have Mesoamerica, just, um, you know, going to war. <laughs> it does also look like Japan is uh, making their way towards unification. We have Shiba in the north, very nice color, by the way. Ashikaga taking up the majority of the land here in Japan, and then a couple of disparate tribes down here in the south, as well as over on these islands. But uh, it looks like Ashikaga is probably going to come out on top, but uh, could be wrong. And I'm not going to say it too early, but uh, Bengal looking pretty beefy. The Reformation is upon us with uh, the usual suspects, Protestants in the north, with Reformed down in the Swiss lands. And we do have Anglicanism popping up over here. The Church of England in Great Britain, which has formed and uh, is splitting up France, for the most part, with the Castilians as well as the Austrians, but um, not so sure how this is going to work out. I think that's actually Bohemia occupying them. But aside from that, uh, the borders in Germany are worse. <laughs> Austria has grown, eaten up all of the Czech lands, pushing Bohemia into like Brandenburg, and then Poland pushing quite a bit over into Pomerania as well as over here. Uh, Muscovy, absolutely a shell of what they once were. We will not be seeing a Russia this time around, at least not from Muscovy. Ottomans have actually clapped back and beaten up on the Mams, splitting some of their lands with QQ of all people. And then Ajam has eaten enough of the Timurids that they have decided to form Persia. Uh, somehow the Timurids are doing better than they were before. I'm pretty sure that they were like dead before. So they managed to come back. Um, and speaking of getting bigger and stronger, Bengal, though a lot of their land is you know, kind of garbage glacial and mountain lands over here in the Himalayans, but they do have quite a big dev base and uh, they may actually be the strongest nation in India, maybe aside from VJ, if I had to guess. Over in the Far East, Manchu has formed and Ashikaga has eaten up the southern portions of Japan and uh, Sheba and them are having a bit of a, a, bit of a uh, warring kingdoms period, I think. Sub-Saharan Africa is uh, being consolidated into just a few tags. It looks like there's like one fifth of what there is in 1444. So normally you don't see a big tag pop out of here. Usually they just get conquered by the colonizers. I would love to see a little bit of strength over here. The colonial game continues with Portugal in the south, Castile over here in the northern parts of the southern continent with uh, over here as well in the Caribbean, as well as on Bermuda. And then the English are settling over here in Newfoundland. Also very funny to see Iceland and Sweden splitting Iceland with Reykjavik going to Sweden. <laughs> That's pretty good. Because yeah, Sweden ended up taking over the entirety of Scandinavia, minus a couple of provinces and uh, Scotland. <laughs> but uh, they're probably gonna end up coming out on top if I had to guess. But we all know that Sweden is definitely not overpowered. It is not overpowered. So about 100 years in, Castile is out in front, about 100 dev in front of Poland, who is incredibly powerful, probably the strongest nation over in Europe, if I had to guess, with Austria, the emperor, in the third spot. And then we have Great Britain in the fourth spot, though they are certainly going to be passed by the Ottomans and Ming whenever they embrace the institution. Uh, then we have Portugal, who is uh, definitely going to climb up the ladder as they colonize more and more, with Venice in the eighth spot, with under 400 development, 
very strong Venice, very good. Uh, they are also very rich. So hopefully they're going to have some staying power because of all that money that they're making. South American colonial game, mostly Portuguese as well as a bit of Spanish. No surprise, same stuff it used to be with the Caribbean also going to the Portuguese and Mexico mostly conquered by the Spanish. Up in North America is where things get a little interesting. We have the Dutch who have arrived as well as uh, they're splitting a bit of the new world over here on the East Coast with the British as well as the Spanish. And then we also have the Commonwealth James Bay because somehow we have colonial Commonwealth because of course the Commonwealth formed and then decided to go colonial. And boy, did the Commonwealth form. I'm here for it. This is this is gorgeous. This is very, very gorgeous. Persia and the Ottomans to the south of them also looking very good with Persia blobbing out. Uh, no King of Kings mission tree. So they're doing good on their own, on their own volition with the Ottomans doing incredibly well. No surprise, they're always very strong with the Mams as like four different provinces over here and down in here. So very funny. Of course, Spain has formed and um, yeah, they're scary. They're very scary. Spanish national ideas alone can carry this entire nation. Venice and Austria have split a ton of the land in the southern portions of uh, like central, middle Europe, whatever you want to call it. Albania still hanging in here, which is so good. I love that. And a couple of the nations up here have consolidated a bit of the land, but for the most part, it's kind of messy still. Though I do love to see Dortmund and Hamburg, two free cities in 1444, kind of dominating over here. Strasbourg might be a single one province minor in 1444 or two provinces. I don't really know exactly, but uh, always funny to see blobs that are just kind of like random nations. Also, I saw it. I'm sure you saw it. And uh, now we have to say it. Gotland got land. Also getting land, not the Ming, but Diviet and Bengal getting a lot of land. And also very based Korea expanding a bit into Manchu as well as over into China. India, however, mostly going to VJ uh, as well as Bengal a bit and Mewar doing pretty good over here. And so still anybody's game. However, it does look like Jenna over here is getting beat up by the Portuguese. You hate to see it, but you can't really be too surprised. And the Reformation continues to spread, mostly the normal stuff with Protestants up here in the north, reformed in the southern central portions, but the new the lowlands is also reformed with Anglicans spreading in the rest. And we actually have some interesting new world stuff, at least over here on the east coast. The rest is all just Catholic. Now Dortmund is gone, replaced by Trier. Uh, Strasbourg has migrated at least a little bit more, and Verden has replaced Hamburg. So different but the same just a new coat of paint sadly the dutch have been gobbled up by the british and uh, looks like the austrians have been kicked out of france mostly by the spanish and the british and burgundy has just migrated to the south as has austria conquering a ton of land in italy splitting it with venice who looks like they have shrunk just a little bit i think i know why who has not shrunk however would be the commonwealth who has pushed well out into siberia splitting some of the land and taking some of the land from scandinavia who was formed by sweden also up here would be uh bengal <laughs> Their name was connected, but uh, Persia decided to snake them a little bit, pushing over into China because Persia wants to get their Chinese colonies, I suppose. And speaking of Chinese colonies, how about Korea uh, with a very big name and uh, Japan with a big name pushing over into Manchuria and uh, sneaking a bit of provinces from China as well. And to be honest, there isn't really much China left. There's a couple of Chinese tags, but uh, yeah, it's not really Chinese. VJ has popped out as the preeminent power over here in India. Uh, maybe they'll form a Hindustan? I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it's Bharat? I can't actually remember which tag is which. Ottomans are beefy, but they are offset by a very strong Commonwealth and Persia, who are allied to each other, actually. And the colonial game continues with uh, Newfoundland and the 13 colonies, Florida, as well as uh, British Michigan, for some reason. Commonwealth Canada has formed, but uh, hasn't really grown a whole lot. I, I don't think that their focus is really on the colonial game. The Spanish have taken quite a bit of land over here, as well as up in the northern portions, with the rest going to Portugal, as well as the left coast of America over here going exclusively to the Portuguese. However, the Spanish have conquered Australia as well as New Zealand. So uh, there's a little bit of a trade-off there. The Spanish are also over in Java as well as in Sumatra. So they are colonizing, but uh, they just might be conquering a little bit more of it than they're actually just, you know, settling. So about 150 years left in the game, Spain with that perfect 3000 score, followed very closely by the Ottomans and Portugal. I'm actually surprised to see Portugal in the number three spot. Fourth would be Great Britain. A lot of development over in uh, the New World, but uh, quite a bit over in France as well as on the British Isles. Uh, Austria in the fifth slot with uh, just under 2,000, followed by a very big Korea taking up a ton of land in China. Commonwealth in seventh, which is actually kind of surprising, but then you look at the fact that they haven't embraced the institution, they would actually be in like the fourth or fifth spot when that time comes. And then Persia in the eighth spot, very cool. Now, Pink Russia was not on my bingo card, but uh, Pink Russia is what we get. This is what it looks like when you uh, play uh, Poland in Hearts of Iron 4 and you conquer the Russians and the Germans, or at least part of the Germans. 
pretty good. I, I, I like it. I think this is a nice color. Meanwhile, over in the east, the borders have cleaned up between Japan and uh, Korea. Took basically all of it. Korea the conqueror, apparently. Normally, Korea doesn't conquer much of anything, but... This time around, they decided to, without their mission tree telling them not to, I guess. While we're over here, we might as well take a look at the Colonial game, which continues to rage on with uh, the three majors duking it out. And meanwhile, North America is finished with basically everything what it was before just filled in. Same thing applies in the South, very blue on the Southern portion and very yellow in the middle. Though we do have a little bit of pink Russia stuff over here in uh, the Guinea region. So that's pretty cool. And Kilwa was uh, kicked a lot out of Kilwa. I know this is kind of their homeland, so to speak. But now they're mostly in Madagascar and uh, Central Africa, I guess. And it is pretty funny to think that uh, the Ottomans and the Commonwealth are now squeezing Persia out of Persia. And they're kind of getting like oozed out like a like a squeezed uh, tube of toothpaste pushing out into Tibet. <laughs> kind of weird that uh, nobody colonized Greenland. It's just free real estate. And for our final check in, Spain here still out in front with Portugal just behind them and Austria neck and neck just four points behind Portugal. Great Britain in the fourth spot, also very close with the Ottomans falling off. Then the Commonwealth, who I'm so surprised that they don't have more development, but I guess it's mostly Siberia, followed by Korea the Conqueror in the seventh spot and VJ in eighth. Love to see a nice spread of the Great Powerless. We also have an economic hegemon stacking up currently for Great Britain. So uh, all cool things all around. Well, lads, I hate to say it, but uh, I had some issues with my file when I was recording. I don't know why it just corrupted it, but uh, I do have to say part of the video here is going to be a little edited and uh, we don't have like the full outro, but I do have all the information for you. So I can't really show it, but I can tell. The number one great power to end it out was actually Germany formed by Austria, which is always funny to see. The Commonwealth ended up in the number two spot and the new world was a complete mess. A bunch of people broke free. Some people conquered some other people and the United States formed, which is always a good time. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like on it. Don't forget to subscribe and ding the bell if you haven't already, because there's a ton of content you're missing out on if you haven't already. If you made it this far into the video, I really do appreciate you. And I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day. Special thanks to Kaiser Dar of Akadia, Geo, Gamus23, Ian Powell, Cannon Fodder, Josh Kipchinski, Agent Rhino, Blonde Damon, Isaiah, Grover, Bubba J, Saronska, Ricardo, Cobalt, Rex Rex, Nathan Albright, and many more.